Hello, everybody. Today, we'll be working on rounding, so to start us off, I have a little poem for us. It goes like this. Underline the digit, look next door. If it's five or greater, add one more. If it's less than five, leave it for sure. Everything after is zero, not more. And I'll show you what that means in just a moment. Okay, so when we talk about rounding numbers, we are looking at um, making them an easier number to think about. Sometimes we do this to add and subtract and test whether our addition and subtraction makes sense. Um, sometimes we do this just to kind of generalize. You know, maybe you have a, a bowl of M&Ms and you say, oh, I think I have about uh, 100 M&Ms in there. So you're generalizing and estimating, and so we can do that with actual numbers when we're um, rounding. So let's, I've got a list of numbers for us here. Let's follow the directions in our poem. In these numbers, what I want to do is round to the tens column. So let's do what it says. Underline the digit, look next door. If it's five or greater, add one more. If it's less than five, leave it for sure. Everything after is zero, not more. So we're gonna leave the six as it is, and we're going to put a zero in. 60 is the nearest 10 to the number 63. Another way we can think about it is to visualize it on a number line. If we have 60 here, and 70 here, this would be 65. Everything on this side of the number line, 61, 62, 63, and 64, would round down to 60. Everything on this side, 66, 67, 68, 69, would round up to 70. And you've got the, the adding one more to this digit and the zero in that column. So let's take a look at our next number. We were literally just mentioned it. So let's underline our digit because we're in our tens column. Let's look next door at our five. Oh, it's five or greater. So we're going to add one more. So six and one more is seven. And then we have a zero in our ones column. I'll erase this for now. Now, I have two numbers here that are in the hundreds, but I've asked us to round to the nearest 10. So we're still going to underline the digit in the tens column. Underline the digit, and now when it says to look next door, we're going this direction to determine whether or not this number needs to change. So if I look next door and I ask, is it five or more or is it less than five? Four is less than five. So everything after, we're not going to add anything to our two, and we are going to have a zero in this uh, column. Now, I've got equal signs here, and that is not exactly correct, so we're just going to get rid of those. All right, let's take a look here. We're going to underline our digit in the tens column. Look next door. Oh, is it five or greater? So we're going to add one more. 530, everything after is zero, not more. So um, these are numbers that are rounded to the nearest tens column. So let's just practice rounding to the nearest hundreds and we'll keep the same numbers here. Okay, so now I want to round to the nearest hundred. So the digit that, I, oh, you know what? I wanted to do this too. There we go. Um, the digit I'm going to underline is this one. Look next door. Is this going to bump this up by one or drop it to zero? 
we are going to change this by one, adding one. And now because I'm rounding to the nearest hundred, I don't have anything in the tens or the ones column, okay? So again here, let's underline the hundred and we have a similar situation where this is greater than five. So we're going to add one to our four. Alrighty, let's take a look down here. I'm rounding to the hundreds. So I've got these thousands here, but I can ignore them for the moment. I'm gonna look next door and see that I have less than five. So what does that tell me with this 500? We're gonna leave it for sure. Everything after are zeros like this. And the same thing with this one down here, right? Because we're, we've got a five again. We're looking at the two. So these had the 520, 520 on this one also. So the 1,000 doesn't change at all. And the five won't change and we'll add zeros there. So these numbers are all numbers that are rounded and they're, they end up being really nice and easy to work with. Okay, let's look at some other numbers. Alrighty, let's take a look at the number that I've built here. 3,496. Alrighty. So let's say that we wanted to round to the nearest 10. Let's take a look. We'll underline our digit. We'll look next door, greater than five. So in this case, we'd say, okay, it's greater than five, so we're going to round up a 10. But what happens now? Uh-oh, we can't have those 10 there. Look at that. We said we were rounding to the nearest 10. But in this case, rounding to the nearest 10 caused a little chain reaction that gets us up into 500. So rounding to the nearest 10 bumps us up. And if you think about it, 496 is really close to 500. We can't change the 10 in this column from nine to 10. We have to have that automatic reaction. Let's take a look at another one like that. Alrighty, now we have 5,997. This one we'll do without the place value disks. I want you to round it to the nearest 10. So you're gonna pause the video and give that a try at home and then let's come back and check it together. Alrighty, when you worked at home, did you underline the digit in the tens column? And then did you look next door and say, uh-oh, We've got greater than five. We're gonna set up a chain reaction again. This digit is going to cause this digit to become a 10. But if I have 10 here, they can't stay there. So it's going to cause this digit to become a 10. They can't stay there either. That's gonna cause a chain reaction all the way up. So when you were um, rounding to the nearest 10, did you happen to get 6,000? If not, you can take a look at that again and see why you think I got 6,000 by rounding to the nearest 10. Let's say I give you this number 450 and I tell you that it's a number that was rounded to the nearest 10. What are some numbers it, the original number could have been to round to 450. Can you think about that for a moment? I wonder if I list the numbers if you're going to see my pattern. So maybe it would be 445 because this five would have us bumping the four to a five, but it could also be Right? Can you see that we could list numbers right on up to 450? Mm -hmm. 
There we go. Any one of these numbers could be rounded up to equal 450. But guess what? Those aren't the only numbers we could round to get to 450. Let's look in another direction. If I have 451, when I look next door, this digit won't change that digit. So it gives us 450. Likewise, it could be 452, 453, 454. Could it be 455? No, it couldn't because 455 would round to 460. Let me show you that. 455, if we're rounding to the tens column, we underline this one. We take a look at the one next door. I say, oh, it's five or greater. I have to add one more. Four, six, and then we've got the zero here. So 455 rounds up to 460. The last thing I want to do is just kind of draw a little number line for us. I really like number lines when it comes to thinking about rounding. So let's say we had a number like, um, start with 200 here, 300 here, and 250 here. Outer. Outer, inner, inner, outer, outer, inner. Okay, so on my number line, I have 200, 250, and 300. All of the other numbers are missing. But what I do have are these little hash marks. When it comes to looking at a number line, the first thing you have to do is decide the value of the hash marks. So let's just try something. Let's try to count by fives. Like we're just guessing. So 200. 205, 210, 215, 220, 225. Hmm, nope, these don't equal five. So what's another good guess? Let's try tens. 210, 220, 230, 240, 250. Ah, okay, so we figured out that each one of those hash marks equals 10. Now here's how we can use the number line for rounding. Let's say we want to round to the nearest hundred. And I have a number that's, let's say, um, it goes right here. 230. Is 230, if I'm rounding to the nearest hundred, is it closer <coughs> to 300? Or is it closer to 200? That's right, it's closer to 200. We'll round 230 to the nearest 100. We'll get it to 200. So 230 rounded to the nearest 100 will give me 200. Notice that I gave us our 5 there, and we're noticing that the digit 3 is less than the digit 5. How about now I say, <clears throat> what if we have the number 200? 80, and I want to round that to the nearest 100. What can we do? Again, we can ask the question, is 280 nearer to 300, or is it nearer to 200? Which one of those hundreds makes the most sense to round to? You got it, look, it's right next to 300. So 280 rounded to the nearest 100 gives me 300. You will be working with the number lines in your books today, so I want you to really make sure to take a moment like we did and make sure you understand what the little hash marks, what the value of them are, and that will then make the rounding that you have to do quite easy. All right, thank you so much for joining me today. I can't wait to see you next time.